Hi, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsychologist, technical agnostic, and Freudian skeptic. For the most part, I would agree in relation to speech codes and uh, freedom of speech impairment in terms of uh, colleges. However, um, and yes, there are problems in terms of uh, the fact that college has gotten even more expensive and the fact that people are not finishing up. There's a couple of problems you're failing to uh, take into account in here, and this is one of the ones which, uh, will, at least in Canada, the stats are pretty well shown about this. There are large percentages, something up, upwards of about 50 to 60 percent of students who, end they, who do drop out, most of them drop out because they can't afford to continue college. It's not because of toughness or the system, the, the way the system is cons constructed. Half the time it's just because of the fact that the, for public institutions, tuition rates are not regulated, so the fees keep, uh, so the fees keep hiking. You know, uh, if somebody loves learning, they're going to be—they're only going to be able to stay there as long as they can afford it. Anyway, the second issue I had was uh, again this, the only issues I have with this show are in part one. Um, another thing, um, to say that you know uh, Bill Gates was a college dropout, uh, uh, um, you know, quoting about uh, about Oscar Wilde, James Randi, Agatha Christie, all these people. Yes, they all did manage to survive. Uh, they all did manage to get successful. Even you, um, Penn, uh, or, or sorry, even Penn Jillette managed to. But the problem with this is that to, to say that one doesn't need to go to college because look at all these people who are celebrities and managed to pull this off, that's called appeal to authority. It's a critical thinking fallacy, especially considering that autodidacts, like Aspies, are a minority of the population. You know, and the ones who do it successfully, like Bill Gates, are an even smaller minority. The bulk of people who end up dropping out of college don't have the motivation to be able to auto uh, to autodidact in the first place, so they end up falling. Uh, you know, the one so they end up taking minimum wage jobs. Why do you think there's only a minority of people who are rich and the rest are middle class or poor? Hello. Sorry. Anyway, I don't mean to uh, overwhelm that, but I, I you know I think this point needs to be stressed. Um, now, granted. There, uh, there are significant improvements. I do agree that we need to take out these speech codes, and I agree that we need to go there to love learning. Uh, matter of fact, I think that there should be a, uh, I do think there should be extensions. On the other hand, um, free speech codes and the like, I think there's a fine line when you're talking about, okay, granted the free speech, co the speech codes go too far, but on the other hand, there should be at least some sort of harassment policy. Um, okay, let me put it to you this way. If somebody calls me an Asperger, like they do on my videos here, Yes, I would consider that inappropriate to have them uh, taken away for at home and attacking me once or twice. On the other hand, if they started making, uh, if they started trying to um, raise protests, uh, if they started uh, spewing enough hate speech and trying to harass, uh, to literally try to, um, uh, you know, send, mo uh, you know, incite people up to the point where they might send a mob after, like a lynch mob after me. Um, again, this would be another extreme example on the far end. If they kept saying it enough to the point where, um, or if they kept saying it enough to the point where teachers and fellow students actually started um, discriminating against me because of my disability, thus making it harder for me to study. Um, you know, i.e., I couldn't get help from tutors, or professors were uh, were more were even more unkind to me, or what have you, because of uh, because of said speech going around. Like, okay, picture it this way: if you have a pamphlet going around. Um, Okay, picture that this way. I'm taking a course, uh, say a, say I'm taking a course in analytical chemistry. It's crucial to my major. And some student uh, starts raising a protest about my disability, Asperger's syndrome. That will be well and good. I mean, if they, if they want to try to ad hom or twist it, I will probably speak out my own defense. You know, I'll probably say it's a critical thinking fallacy. But for the most part, I leave it be. But say, for example, this person starts going around, uh, starts going around, and starts pestering all my professors, and actually manages to convince a few of them that uh, my disability, it, uh, uh, that that my disability or what have you, uh, makes me somewhat um, evil or something, and influences their opinions enough, uh, or 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 even bit worse yet, tries to say that Asperger's syndrome is a made-up disorder, convinces my professors, and all of a sudden I don't get the exam accommodations or assignment accommod accommodations I need to be able to conduct my assignments, and I fail my class. That would be harassment on somebody's part because they're cause you know that would be a harmful harassment or harmful hate speech because in that case it's biasing professors to the point where it's actually uh, where it's actually being a detriment to my education. That's where I think there needs to be a concern, not in terms of freedom of speech, but there needs to be a term in terms of um, not so much a, 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 a not so much a, a, a what you say, but there should be a proper channel like a time and a place for saying it, and a time and a place which would be um, or. You see what I mean? Not so much that you know, trying to restrict what people say or or, or speech codes. Like, I agree that they go too far. But the, on the other hand, I do think that we should have something in place so this way, people aren't. Uh, 
Okay, say for example, uh, if somebody put up a swap, uh, say for example, or, or if, uh, if, if I knew someone who was, uh, if I were Jewish, just hypothetical, let's say I was Jewish, and somebody put up a swastika on my, um, and somebody put up a swastika on my door, would that be considered okay by freedom of speech? Well, what about the imply, uh, what about the implication of there being a threat? If somebody knows where I live and has put a swastika on my door as part of their freedom of speech, um, you know, that could imply to me that I have a threat of somebody who, uh, who's ready to come and kill me. That could cause emotional distress, and that's where the crossover comes in. It's not about what you say. It's about whether there's a, a proper time and a proper place for doing so. Now, granted, I agree that, um, you know, that people should even be able to speak out at protests. Like, if people have different opposing viewpoints to what the protesters are talking about, then yes, opposing viewpoints should come up during those times. However... There should be a limited proper uh, channel, uh, you know, but, but, uh, but you know, other types of stuff like actual hate crimes or hate speech. And definition of hate speech is when you're actually trying to uh, threaten people through letters because of their racial group or putting swastikas on their doors, that sort of thing. You know, that's where there's a, there's a fine line between there's a fine line between hate speech and freedom of speech. And you know, they okay. And universities in the United States, and to a certain extent in Canada, have gone too far the other direction, trying to overprotect. Granted, I think we could wean it back a little bit, but I don't think that we should be completely abolishing speech codes altogether, or we should be modifying them in such a way that they're, um, you know, that they're a student conduct policy, like whatever federal law says is co consti constitutes harassment, or um, you know, constitutes harassment under these racial or discriminatory uh, contexts. I mean, yes, the First Amendment says, you know, that people can't, you know, that you can't inhibit freedom of speech. But there are certain hate laws which do say stuff about how you can say what you want to say. It's not about, uh, it's not about, it's not about what you say. It's about how you say it and what, because, um, you know, in some ways you say it. Like, okay, so let me put it this way. You're trying to say one thing in your, in your overall goal. You're try say, for example, use a critical thinking fallacy. That's fine. You want to use that as a format of argument to change someone's mind on a particular issue? Be my guest. Somebody might be logical enough they'll try to fall for it. That's, you know, that's their thing. You want to use a critical thinking fallacy or you want to say whatever you want, that's fine. But the moment you start going into somebody's, but the moment you start, say, putting up a swastika on somebody's door or that you stalk, start stalking where they live and trying to, uh, and trying to uh, you know, yell at them as they keep walking home every day when they're already tired from school or what have you, I mean, that could constitute harassment. It's like trying to, um, it's like, uh, uh, it's like, say for example, um, your ex-girlfriend dumps you. Uh, you go to their home. You know where they live, and you keep stalking them every day, and you say this person's a bitch, or and then there's this bitch, like, uh, like that. But you do it every day right in front of their house, and basically you try to yell the all and sundry about how, um, about how you know, and you do it right in front of their house. You do it to all and sundry about how, um, about how they were a bitch because they dumped you. Well, that's harassment because you're going onto their pro you're you know you're you're following them into their space or the area in which they live like as they're headed towards their own property um, you know and if if they try to ignore you or something like that what's the um, you know what's the um, how should we say what is the constraint from uh, from you um, going up and uh, and not only just harassing but from physically assaulting that woman or something like that what what me, uh, what guarantee does she have that you won't cross over that line that's a fear incitement, and that's why, and that's where the line crosses over between freedom of speech and actually trying to intimidate somebody or harassment, and, and that's where that line comes in. Terms of endearment, okay. Now, granted, some people, you know, um, terms of endearment and the like, yes, the speech codes go too far, but that doesn't mean we should eliminate them altogether. And for colleges, yes, people are dropping out. Yes, people are, but uh, yes, people are. Some people are able to do autodidactic. Autodidacts are a minority. If we even worry about the uh, about the lack of scientific understanding in society and the like. How are people supposed to even be able to get exposed to enough different uh, diverse ideas and to be able to love learning without university or something like it? If they're not an autodidact or they're you know they've got limited information anyway, to be able to uh, to be able to distinguish truth from bullshit based entirely on what Penn and Teller tell them, that's another appeal to authority right there. If people don't even have a, uh, a proper understanding of scientific studies or context, how are they going to know whether to check up sources that uh, Penn and Teller cite or anything like that? Again, that's the point of university. Besides, also, don't forget that we still uh, need people educated in science classes and the like because um, you, know, to be, you have to be educated in the basics of science first in order to be able to do proper research and submit for peer review, which could later end up um, you know, causing the great, uh, uh, you know, the great discoveries. That's just my thoughts. Toodles.